I would probably say it came about after I got my master's degree. It was, I, I started to, you know, span through my mind individuals that I would see, individuals that were in my class, and I look at them and I look at where we are, and I'm like, you know, maybe I need to do more to help my generation to move forward. Um, so that's when it really started to come about. And then just, you know, just helping students. I'm, I'm an educator. Um, so it's kind of a natural thing, natural progression for us. Um, I'm in a line of educators. I have aunts and aunts that are educators. So it's, you know, it's, it's in us to yeah. try to give back and to help the, the next person get to the next level. Well, I actually got involved with the NAACP as a member about three, four years ago. And I guess it was just, you know, something glut riching inside of me was like, you just need to do something. You just need to give back. So I said, okay, let me join the NAACP. So I joined. Um, I think I was the youngest person in the room at the time. <laughs> and um, I just kind of stayed with it. I really didn't, you know, push anything. It was just feel the lay of the land sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then the following year, they wanted me to run for vice president. And I was like, Okay, I think I can do that, sure. Um, and I did. And then as I, we were progressing through that year of the term, it was like, we want you to run for president. And I'm like, are you for real? And they was like, sure, yeah, we think you would do a great job at it. So I spoke to Otis, our former president, and we had some conversation about it. And he was like, I think you will. He says, I think you'll do an excellent job at it. So I did. Um, and we've been moving ever since. You know, Our membership base is growing. Um, we're moving in a good direction. So, as I said, the train is kind of leaving the station slowly, but that's a good thing. We're, we're moving. Is it I guess I think it's the change that we've all been looking for, um, but I guess we didn't know how to address it, sort of thing. Um, you know, for the older generation, it's like, you know, just leave that alone. And for my generation, it's like, let's make it better for the next group of people that are going to come through. Um, but it's interesting to watch. It, it really is. It's interesting to watch, um, to see how it all unfolds. Um, for me, I, it's, it's just a matter of let's do what's right. right. Um, and that's what I can't, I, that's where, I guess for me, it's like we have no other choice. You know, let, let's just do what's right. You know, granted, things have been up for a while. It's our tradition. It's our heritage. But is it right in this day and time yeah. as we're trying to move forward? Yeah. I guess now it, it's, it's the opportune time. Uh, you, you know, we have the examples of the Carol South Carolina and, and the remarkable um, gesture that they did by taking the Confederate flag down. Um, so we, 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 have, um, we, we have experiences that we can now learn from, such as that one. So now, I think now is the time to do it. Uh, and you mentioned, you know, what is the right thing to do? Well, you know, in looking at the history of the Talbot Boy statue, I want to say that in 1914 or 1913, the monument was supposed to be dedicated to the Union men and to the Confederate men. But somewhere along the lines, the, con the Union did not raise enough money is one uh, the scenario I heard. And then I heard that there was more uh, support for the Confederate uh, individuals in Talbot County. So they won the debate to erect an, a monument solely dedicated to them. Uh, so is that the true story that we really want told as it relates to the monument on the courthouse lawn? is that there was only one side of the Civil War uh, as it relates to individuals in Talbot County fighting it. And the answer is no. Uh, we want both sides of that history to be represented and represented fairly, fair. Uh, so, you know, that's the right thing to do. What, what I would propose is that we take it down and we build another monument that represents both sides. I However that would look, um, I don't know. But that, that's what I proposing is that we do something that represents both sides um, and we take that one down and we find a historical uh, place such as the historical society I've seen in editorials I've seen um, Spring Hill Cemetery I've seen that one um, somewhere where it properly belongs because again that is 
that, that did take place. But we just need to make sure that we're telling the other side of it as well. Because in my research, what I was doing, once I found, started doing the research, I too went up there and took pictures of it. And I was like, well, maybe, you know, the, the names on the north are for those that fought in the Union and the names on the south side is those that fought in the Confederates. So I was like, maybe, you know, th there's some good here. And then as I started researching the names, on both sides, I realized that it was a monument that was solely dedicated to the Confederate Army. Do you know what I mean? I, I think that the community as a whole realizes that that's a part of our history, but in, in, in understanding the entire history, I think that's where there were some question marks. Um, and now, I, with all of this coming to light, it's like, oh, you know, maybe we do need to tell the entire part. And it does need to come you know, down. The, I, I'm, and I, I can't speak for every African American, but the older generation, I think they, you know, they've come so far. And it's like, we don't want to do anything that's going to cause harm or anything like that. We, you know, especially for me, when I talk to my grandparents about everything that I'm involved, it's like, you know, just be careful. And they're looking out for my best interest. They're looking out for my safety. Um, but again, you know, times have changed and, and the values that they've given us over the years, you know, it's, sometimes I think that's what we're born to do. You know? well, I, I, I guess to keep it as is would send the message, is there really true justice? Um, you know, the courthouse lawn is supposed to be a place where we go for a fair and equal trial. I mean, with that, is that fair that we're only telling one side of the story? I was told probably last week there's a reason why Lady Justice is blindfolded, so that she can't see the other things around her, but she bases everything off of the facts and whether or not things are fair. Uh, based upon the facts that she received. So again, I is it fair that we keep a statue up there that only tells one side of the story? Yeah. Uh, you know, following up, would it, if it was modified to tell both sides of the story, would this is we're so cheap in this county. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're, we're so cheap in this county, but there's so much wealth in this county. Um, I was a part of the Frederick Douglass Honor Society and how they galvanized people together to raise money to erect this statue. So I believe that we can do the exact same thing uh, to erect a new statue that would indeed bring about the uh, unity that we're looking for. I think to modify the existing one that's already there, it's that perception, we still got what we wanted, uh, but we're just adding something else. But to bring about n a newness um, and to bring about the unity that we so desire that we, you know, our, we talk to our kids about character counts and character education and, you know, our, talk, our school system is going through courageous conversations and all of that is about unity and bringing folks together. So yeah. I think that's what a new one would do. Yeah.